This is how you can make a bug report system for your Discord.js version 14 bot, so let's go and get started. Before I show you how to do this, I'd like to say that if you're interested in getting the source code from this video or any of the other videos on my channel, you can go ahead and join a super or god tier subscription on YouTube, or you can go ahead and get a god tier subscription on Discord. We also have a brand new bot tier, which will give you the full zip file of the exact bot used in these videos. We also offer four bot packages based on a specific topic. All of this will be in the description below if you're interested, and with that, let's go ahead and get into the video. All right, so we're going to start off by going over to community and we're going to go ahead and create a bug reports.js in here we're going to start off by getting our slash command builder we're going to define the rest later then we can do equals require and we're going to get discord.js we're going to start off by getting our module.exports and we can go ahead and get our data which can be our new slash command builder we're going to start by setting a name which can be a bug report we're going to go ahead and set a description and within this we can just go ahead and say send a bug report to the bot devs we're going to add a comma and we're going to go ahead and do async execute so we can go ahead and pass in our interaction and we can open this up we're going to start by saying if no interaction dot killed then we're just going to go ahead and return a wait and we can do interaction to reply and we're going to start off by saying content and we can go ahead and get our caution emoji and we can go ahead and say please report this bug within a guild and we're going to go ahead and set informal to true just like that following that so we're going to go ahead and create our model so the model is going to be our new model builder so to enable that we have to define our model builder we're going to go ahead and set the title of bug and command abuse reporting we're going to say our bug report as a custom id we're going to go ahead and make a command text input builder. So we're going to have to define our text input builder in discord.js. We're going to set the custom ID to type. We're going to set required to true. We're going to set a placeholder to please only state the problematic feature. We're going to set the label to what feature has a bug or is being abused. We're also going to get our text input style. We're going to define that up here as well. Uh, next, we're going to go ahead and make a description. So this is going to be another new text input builder with the custom ID of description. We're going to set required to true. Placeholder is going to be B sure to be as detailed as possible so the developers can take action and we're going to set the label to describe the bug or abuse this is going to be a paragraph for a text input style so next we're going to go and get these action row builders so we can do const one equals new action row builder and we can add our components and this is going to be our command then we're going to do const two equals new action row builder we're going to go ahead and add our components and this is going to be our description we're going to have to define action row builder above but it did it for me automatically so that's not a problem then we're going to go ahead and do model and we can do add components we're going to add one and two so we added both of those action row builders and it's not going to be model builder it's just going to be model we're going to be using the variable uh, then we're going to go ahead and do await interaction to show model and we're going to show our model variable just like that so with that we're done with the command portion this essentially just sends a model so now we actually have to handle the model interaction so we're going to go over to events and we can go ahead and create a bug report.js we're going to go ahead and start off by defining a couple of things so we're going to go ahead and get our embed builder our events our action row builder our button style and our button builder then we can go ahead and run our module that exports we're going to go ahead and get our name which is going to be events that interaction create and then we can do async executes we're going to go ahead and pass in our interaction and we're actually going to go ahead and get our client as well and then we can open this up we're going to say if no interaction dot guild or and then we can do no interaction that is model submit then we're just going to go ahead and return you could separate that out into a separate logical statement if you'd like make that two statements but i'm just going to do one then we can say if and we can do interaction dot custom id is equal to our bug reports then we can go ahead and open this up so within this we're going to go ahead and get a couple of things the first is going to be our commands and our descriptions. So I'm just going to copy this. It's going to be const command equals interaction of fields that get text input value. That's going to be our type. And our description is going to be interaction of fields that get text input value. And that's going to be description. So this is type and description. These are the custom IDs from both the command and description from before. So now we're going to go ahead and get a couple of variables. So we're going to do const ID equals interaction dot user dot ID. We can do const member equals interaction dot member. And we can do const server equals interaction dot guild that id uh, actually we'll just do interaction dot guild we can pull the id from that then we're going to do const channel equals await client dot channels dot cache dot get you could also do fetch but i'm just going to get it from the cache 
we're going to go ahead and copy and paste the channel. So this channel is going to be your bug reports channel ID. So it's going to be a private server or a private channel for developers only to receive these reports. Then we're going to write out our embed. So we can do const embed equals new embed builder. We're going to set a color and I'm just going to go ahead and make this a blur pool. We're going to go ahead and set a title and I'm going to go ahead and get a mailbox emoji and we can go ahead and say new bug reports. We're going to go ahead and add some fields. So our first field is going to be reporting member. So we're going to have the name reporting member, the value backslash tick. We do member.user.username and we're going to pass in our ID within parentheses and we can finish that backslash tick off. Then we're going to go ahead and get another field that's going to be reporting guild with the same type of thing. So it's going to be backslash tick server.name and then we can go ahead and get our server.id in parentheses. Then we're going to go ahead and get our problematic feature. So we're going to say problematic feature with a name. We can do value. We're going to get an arrow and we can go ahead and get our command. And we're going to do the same type of thing for the description. So we're going to go ahead and say report description. We're going to say value. We can do an arrow and we're going to do our description variable. So now that we have all of our information, we can say timestamp. And we're also going to go ahead and set a footer. We can get text and this is going to be bug report system just like that. So now we're going to go in and do const button equals and we can do new action rope builder. So we're going to go in and add our components and this is going to be our new button builder. Within this, we're going to set a custom ID and this is actually really important because we're going to be using this later. So we're going to say bug reports and we can go in and do dash and we can go in and get our ID. That is going to be the user ID that we're going to use in just a bit. We're going to set a style and this is going to be button style and we can do dot danger and we can set a label and I'm going to go ahead and just get a hammer emoji and we can go ahead and say mark as solved. So now that we have our button and our embed with all of our information in it, we're going to go ahead and send it. So we can do await channel.send. We can go ahead and get our embeds. We're going to get our embed and we're going to get our components and we're going to go ahead and get our button component. Uh, we're also going to go ahead and catch an error just in case for some reason it doesn't work. So we can just go ahead and catch an error. Um, and then we're going to go in and do await interaction to reply. And we can go ahead and say contents. And I'm just going to go ahead and get a globe emoji. And we're going to go ahead and say your report has been recorded. We can say our developers will look into this issue and reach out with any further questions. We're also going to go ahead and set infermal on this message to true. All right, so that is all we actually are going to have to do for the handling of the model submit. Now, all that's left to do is handle the button. So to do that, we're going to go over to events and we can go into our interaction create. So we're going to go into the existing interaction create. So we're going to go above our line that says if no interaction dot is command return, because obviously the button is not going to be a command. So we're going to go above that and we're going to go ahead and start off by saying if and we can do interaction dot custom ID. So we're just going to go in and check to see if the interaction has a custom ID, because if it doesn't, then we're just going to go ahead and proceed with the rest of the file. So if it does have a custom ID, then we're going to check to see if the interaction a custom ID is uh, actually is going to include, then we're going to say bug solved and we can just do a dash just like that. So essentially we're going to go ahead and check to see if the interaction custom ID includes this. We can't say if it's equal to this because it's going to have the user ID. So we're going to handle that. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to come inside of this and we can do var string ID and we're going to set that equal to interaction custom ID. Then we're going to go ahead and actually take out the bug solved dash from this. So that is going to be the custom ID that we're going to be using to fetch it, but we don't need it. We only need the user ID. So we're going to go ahead and say string ID equals string ID dot replace. And we're going to go ahead and replace it with our bug solved and dash. And we're going to go ahead and actually replace the bug solved dash with empty strings. So we're going to go ahead and completely remove that from the string. So now all that we have left in our string ID variable is the member ID that we actually went ahead and passed into our custom ID. So the reason we're doing this is so that we can actually access that member ID within this file so that we can then go ahead and send them a message. So first we have to fetch the member. So we can say var member equals await client.users.fetch and we can get our string ID. Then we're going to go ahead and send them a message. So we can do await member.send and we can go ahead and get a globe emoji and all we have to say is this message was initialized and we can say by the developers and then we can go ahead and say indicating that the bug you reported has been solved. So because the custom ID it does not include any more specific information on the actual report, we have no means of actually accessing that information on the report. So we're just going to send a pretty generic message. But essentially this is going to let the member know that their report has been solved. 
just so that they have that peace of mind. Then we can go ahead and do a wait interaction to reply, and we're going to say content, and I'm going to get a globe emoji again this time. And within this string, we're going to go ahead and say, I have notified the member that their report is now solved. And we're going to go ahead and set informal to true on that. And then we can do wait interaction dot message that deletes. And we're just going to go ahead and catch an error. So after we solve the reports, we need some way of removing the report because if this was in the previous file or it was a collector essentially, then what we do is we'd edit out the button or we'd set it to disabled. But because we don't have access to the button in here, what we have to do is just delete the message so that the member can no longer use that button. And also deleting the message makes sense because the report is no longer valid. So if we remove it, then the problem has been solved. So with that, we are actually done with this entire system. So let's go ahead and save all of these files, restart the bot, and test this out. All right, so over in the Discord, let's go ahead and test this out. So let's just say I'm in the Discord, and maybe we're using a command, and for some reason, it's not working. Obviously, this is actually working, but let's say it's not. We can go ahead and report it, and we're going to go ahead and get our bug report command. I guess you could just say report, but bug report works a little bit better. Um, our problematic feature, we would fill out, so we could go ahead and say inbox command. And then within our description, we could go ahead and say the inbox command is not getting any mentions from the servers I'm in. So essentially, we've made up a false bug report, but this is essentially what you'd be seeing in a bug report. So then we go ahead and click submit and then it's going to say your bug report has been recorded our devs will look into this issue and reach out with any further questions so then we would go over into our discord and we'd be met with our message so this is our developer server and i made a report channel so within this report channel we're going to see a new bug report so the reporting member is me and that's my id and then it's going to say the server that the report was initiated in and that's going to be the id of the server as well and then it's going to give the information that we provided so the problematic feature which is the inbox command and the report description which is the inbox command is not getting any mentions from the servers i'm in even though that is false so let's say I was a developer, I received this command, and then I realized that I had an issue, I went and fixed it. Now, all I would have to do is click on marked as solved. Now, the interaction did fail, and I believe I know why, so let's go ahead and go into the code and fix that. So it's really easy right here where I made the button, I did bug report, and in here where I checked the custom ID, I did bug solved. So because it's easy to fix in here, let's just go ahead and change this to bug solved. So now let's go ahead and save the file and test this out again. So because we actually changed the custom ID of this button, even if we were to click on it again, it's not going to work. And the reason for that is because the interaction create would technically work if we restart the bot, but the custom ID in this specific button is not the same as the interaction create check. So let's just go ahead and make a real quick report to further test this so we can just make this really quick and we can go ahead and send it. So now we have a brand new report. So if we were to go ahead and click on mark as solved, as you can see, it's gonna go ahead and say, I'm notified the member that the report is now solved and it went ahead and deleted that message. Now, if we were to go over into my DMs, the reporting member is going to receive a DM saying this message was initialized by developers indicating that the bug you reported has been solved. So that means the system is working. So that's you can make an advanced bug reporting system for your discord.js version 14 bot. If you do need any help with this, go ahead and join the server in the description below and use our help channels here. And we'll be happy to help you out. And you might as well just join anyways because this is a pretty good coding community. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next video.